Power Hour LSU Boom! Let's freaking go. This game right here is the most heavily anticipated non-championship game I can remember in any LSU sport. It is up there. Iowa, Caitlin Clark, the rematch. There is so much to break down about this game. I am to the point where tomorrow we might just do a pregame, halftime, and postgame show. We're going to treat this like how we do all our football games. This is up there with the LSU versus Wake Forest last year for a chance to go to the College World Series final. This is up there with any of the LSU-Alabama games. Uh the last two are obviously really big, but this game is truly, truly special when it comes to anticipation. So we're really excited about that. We're going to talk about Jay Johnson, Brian Kelly. Obviously, we're going to do a lot more football stuff because we are so much women's basketball focused up to this point. But, yo, this is the biggest story in all the sports. And we had a captivating NCAA men's basketball weekend with a few teams making their first Final Four uh, appearance in, in so long. But everyone's talking about this women's. USC Iowa, obviously, versus USC UConn, LSU Iowa, South Carolina, looking kind of beatable in the women's game. Um, but yes, I promise you, we're going to get to every single thing you can potentially think of Tonight, that is LSU sports related. We're even going to talk some softball. Taylor Pleasance, my goodness gracious. They take care of business versus Texas A&M. So I, I want to talk about Haley Van Lith. Um, she She's not played well. <laughs> you know, Flage ha, has been the discussion on this dream about how she's become the best player on this team. Okay, it is unreal what Flage Johnson has been able to accomplish uh, on and off the court. Okay, it's insane. We also have Angel Reese, who is not playing her best. Field goal percentage is down, in particular in the first two games. But this is a favorable matchup. I think this could be one of the cleaner matchups for her. You take a look at Middle Tennessee State, they had a girl who was 6'6". UCLA, they had a girl that was 6'8". Iowa has Hannah Stalky. I know I'm not saying her name correctly. She's okay. I think this is actually the best post matchup. Because you remember in the first game, Rice had a girl who was like Shaquille O'Neal down there in terms of build. And we struggled with her. She had a very interesting name. I forgot it. So this could be the big Angel Reese game. And you look at Iowa this year. Iowa, um, when they lost to Kansas State early this season, they had a center who went for 42. A girl for Ohio State. I think I have her name pulled up right here. I don't. Uh, she was all Big Ten. She went for a season-high game in overtime. I watched that game. I think Angel Reese has a good shot tomorrow to dominate because Iowa has struggled with dominant post players. So this is actually Angel Reese's, I, I feel, easiest post matchup she's drawn up to this point. She had Lauren Betts, who is definitely one of the best post players you'll ever see in women's college basketball. She really is that good. Uh, Team USA teammate of Angel Reese. 
I think tomorrow could be the Angel Reese breakout. And that's the kind of scary thing about LSU is Angel Reese has not necessarily played uh, a, a great game yet. You got Anissa Morrow playing well. And we know Anissa Morrow, she's been probably the most consistent uh, player from start to finish. And then, of course, Michaela Williams is playing phenomenal basketball right now. She really is. And it's important to point out that she hit a true freshman stag in the middle of the year, in particular on road SEC games. Um, it's 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 been amazing watching her really start to play well towards this portion of the season. So I'll be honest with you. I, I've told you, and I, I really, really freaking do mean this. Iowa is a better team than Colorado. Colorado is a deeper team. And what gives LSU issues are deeper teams because they're not that deep. Iowa is not a deep team at all. They're really not. They are a one-person team. I, I'm just going to say it. Okay, they are a one-person team. Uh, you know, I, I saw uh, Chance point out that this is um, – they, they have a, a, a really good post player. That was from last year's team. She went to the WNBA. She's gone. Uh, and Iowa's got other good guards, but I, I, I really do like this matchup for us. Last year, of course, was a better matchup because we were just deeper and, and better uh, overall as a team. But I'm telling you right now, I, I, I like where we sit. I really, really, really do. I felt last year's game, the rest advantage was very much in our favor. This year, not so much because they played so early on Saturday and it's a night game on Monday. Uh, but Iowa did play later in the day on Saturday. I just don't think the rest advantage is as big of a deal because we're not as deep. I, I felt that was such a huge deal in the game last year. So I really do like where LSU is set up, but I, I feel Haley Van Lith could have a really good game as well. There are some instances this year where some five, nine ish kind of guards, Haley Van Lith is five, seven, five, eight. Jazz Shelley of Nebraska. Uh, was four points over her scoring average. Sarah Scalia of Indiana was about um, five points over her scoring average versus Iowa. J.C. Shelton, uh, a really good guard in that five seven five eight range. Uh, you know, I was studying this earlier today to see if there was a path forward to a Haley Van Lith breakout. That might have to come in the next round. I really do feel Angel Reese is going to dominate tomorrow. I, I think this will be her easiest matchup offensively. Defensively, probably not so much because nobody defensively um, could really prepare for Caitlin Clark because she is one of one. But I, I, I really do like our matchups. But don't forget, tomorrow, pregame, halftime, postgame, we're going to talk about all of it. All right? I, I'm going to do a pregame, halftime, and postgame show tomorrow. I've already announced it. That's where it's going to be. OK, so I, I, I do want to show Haley Van List some love here. All right. There is something to be said. And I feel like this is deserving because I, I felt Kim Mulkey really handled herself well when she was attacked by the L.A. Times. I felt the Washington Post piece was what it was. I don't think it was um, anything like unbelievably revolutionary. I also don't think it was just bad, like everyone painted it to be. But the LA Times piece was ir irresponsible. I, I didn't know about it until the post-game press conference when Kim Mulkey brought it up. I want you to hear what, what Haley Van Lis said uh, to the media uh, earlier today, though. I think there's a lot of, of situations um, that play into it. But I think, you know, we do have a lot of black women on this team. Um, we do have a, a lot of people that are from different areas and unfortunately, you know, that, that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see it with myself, you know. I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. And so it, it's really up to me to, you know, uh, it's not up to me, but I have a duty to my teammates 
um, to have their back. Um, and obviously, you know, some of the words that were used in that article were very sad and upsetting. And, you know, I didn't really, I actually didn't want us to, to read that article before the game because hearing stuff like that, it's, it's not right. And it's not that type of description of us isn't always motivating. I think, you know, um, calling us basically the dirty debutantes, like, that's, that's, that has nothing to do with sports, and that is not, that's not motivating. And so I think, uh, I wish we hadn't have uh, read that, because I think that that can crush your soul a little bit, that someone would ever say that about us that doesn't know us. But again, you know, obviously, in my opinion, I know for a fact that people see us differently because we do have a lot of black women on our team who have an attitude and, and like to talk trash and, you know, people feel a way about it. But at the end of the day, I'm rocking with them because they don't let that change who they are and um, they stay true to themselves. And so I'll have their back. It is something to be said. When a white lady like Haley Van Leth, who didn't have to say that, steps up for her teammates. It is it, that that was very impressive. And this is someone who knows she's probably not playing her best basketball. That means a lot as a, as a, as a person of color. I think a lot of uh, people that, that have felt racial discrimination in, in, in the past, you know, you, you do see the double standards. And look, I you, you cannot go into this game and understand culturally how big of a game this is in terms of race. We saw what happened last year with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. We we saw it. You guys, um, you, you guys saw last year when, uh, you know, my Facebook page has never really been popping. I've always been YouTube. The messages and stuff when Angel Reese did what she did at the end of the game. Uh, so I commend HVL for, for stepping up for her teammates and uh, calling out dirty debutantes. I, I still don't know what debutante means. Uh, so <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane. Absolutely insane. So, uh, you know, the, the culturally, this is a big game tomorrow. This is a big, big, big game tomorrow, right? Because you do see the two sides. You do, you, 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 you really do. And that's the, um, that's a benefit. That's a, that's a great, part about basketball brings all these people together, all these different cultures together. And I, I will say some of the, some of the stuff that I saw um, uh, about class and all that BS last year, I will never forget. It is seared in my brain. <laughs> huh? 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 Uh, so there you go. But that's the thing. Spectrum well care. I don't know if I want, to Google. I, I've still not done it. <laughs> I don't really care. Uh, but I appreciate it. I, pr- I appreciate uh, HVL for st- standing up for her teammates. Now, I will also say this. I think in this game, all the pressure is on Iowa. I really do feel like LSU is just going to be the looser team for a lot of different reasons. I saw someone uh, in the comments bring up, hey, why didn't they have this game set up for the Final Four? Why, why, why don't you save this matchup for the Final Four? Well, this is why it's so important to understand that women's basketball has gotten deeper than even what it was last year. Y'all, UConn wasn't, didn't exist last year, basically. Their their best player was out. There was no guarantee that LSU and Iowa would make the Final Four. NC State looks amazing right now. South Carolina's out there. Every single Final Four matchup this weekend was loaded. Loaded. Oregon State has a really good team. I watch them. Um, there, it's it's a loaded Elite Eight. This is one of the best, um, uh, the, one of the best 
uh, Elite Eights I have ever seen. I don't know if LSU and I would have made the Final Four. I'm so glad we're getting the rematch. I'm so glad. So, I understand that a lot of us wanted LSU, Iowa, and South Carolina to all be in the Final Four. No guarantees. I will tell you this. If there was one thing I wanted out of this women's basketball season, it was to play Iowa again. I Even before... Even at the at the end of last year, I said, hey, let's play a non-conference game versus Iowa just so we can get a rematch. So, there you go. Now, I, before we get to all your comments tonight, I also need you guys to enlighten me on what happened this weekend with LSU baseball. A few dramatic losses mixed in there. You were up against it versus Hagen Smith on uh, on Thursday. I think a lot of us felt we weren't going to win that game because they had the best pitcher in America right now. But for me, on the outside looking in, not knowing these players as, as, as well as, as you guys probably do, we're just weaker in a lot of spots. We, we just are. I think they need to think long and hard about the shortstop position. I think they need to think long and hard about center field. Um, there is a lot that Jay Johnson is going to reevaluate this week. But that's the thing. I don't watch every pitch. Some of you do. I know Chance does. Uh, I think AP does. Uh, Noah is back. Good to see Noah back. Noah does. I know Sibley watches a, a lot of baseball. I was a little in and out. Very busy weekend for your boy. Um, but we are 0 for 3 in SEC series. And yes, each and every one of those series was tough. On the road versus Mississippi State. Florida, national championship rematch. Arkansas. But we're we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I, I I don't see this team turning it around and hosting a super regional. Um, I think a regional is still very much in play. Super, I hope so. I I really 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 do hope so. So there you go. Now, as always, anything you want to talk about, feel free to super chat, Venmo, Cash App. Football, there's just not a whole lot going on with it, but there are a few things that I want to discuss football-related. Um, I I am really excited that the XFL or the United Football League, UFL, there are so many LSU players that made some noise today. John Trey Kirkland did. Brad Wing did. They were even on the same team. Brad Wing threw a touchdown today. So I'm a big believer in keeping up with the LSU football players after they – leave the program. I'm not going to do a whole lot of UFL breakdowns. I don't even know if they won the game. But we'll see. Uh, but you guys let me know. You guys let me know. Chef says shortstop is fine. Uh, Lee says, I can't wait to crush the WNBA Finals Views record. They already did that last year. Good to have Bayou Bingle back. Good to see you. I saw Jared in here a minute ago. Jared, the, the goat uh, of, of PHL. Freddie's back. Good to see you. I think I saw Jay Red in here. There he is. Scrolling all the way back to the beginning. B. Weinman, George. Oh, it was Mark who brought up the Final Four thing. I'm just glad we're playing. Pick Six was the first commenter tonight. Good to see you. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Can you hear me loud and clear? I want to make sure vocally you can hear my golden baritone voice. I don't even think my voice is a baritone. Ha, ha, ha. But there you go. Um, You know, I, I, I was thinking about this earlier as far as as um, as far as football is concerned. I, I, I've thought long and hard ab about this next year's version of the LSU football Tigers. And 
I shared how the schedule for this next year has broken in the right direction in a major way. And I'll do it again now. I really do feel this is important. I understand this early in the season, your main focus should be yourself. But I go through and I, I analyze schedules pretty much every year. And I really do feel more so than any other sport, your schedule matters the most in college football than any other sport, period. Schedules aren't as important in college basketball. Schedules aren't as important in college baseball. They are important, but ultimately your season is decided by a 64-team tournament at the end of the year. Football, your games really do matter. Now, they don't matter as much now with the 12-team playoff, but it is what it is. But I'm telling you right now, I still think USC is going to be good. I think South Carolina has a chance to be ranted. I think UCLA has a chance to be really, really, really bad uh, this year. We get a bye week before Ole Miss. Ole Miss won't have their bye week yet up to that point in the season. Yes, back-to-back road games. I think Arkansas has a chance to be terrible. Um, Florida might not have their coach. Vanderbilt is Vanderbilt. And Oklahoma should be pretty good. I'll be honest. I think they're going to be pretty good. But no more Saban on the schedule. Texas A&M should be pretty good. But when it comes to continuity, even with LSU, even with LSU losing what they're losing, I'm about to give you a stat. Okay? That will rattle you. To your core. And I want you. All right. Tell me this right now. Whether you're Dex. Whether you're Chef. Whether you're whoever. This will be a stat that you can take in to work tomorrow. And shock all of your coworkers. And I'm giving it to you for free. Now, if it is in your heart's desire, join our PHO Patreon. Join our chat room with Jared, Skipper, LA Mom, the whole crew, the PHO OGs, where we talk softball, baseball. We share Easter photos, talk about music, but mostly we talk about LSU football. Even though the chat is, is a big LSU softball, LSU softball chatter in there. If you're a softball fan, that's the place you want to be. Only $9.99 a month that I send you a Joe Burrow card in the mail. Now, can anyone, anyone, tell me when the last time LSU had a quarterback and two wide receivers get selected in the first round of the NFL draft. Let me repeat. Can anyone in the chat tell me what year LSU had a quarterback and two wide receivers selected in the first round of the NFL draft in the same draft? Do you know? I'm 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 waiting for someone to get this correct. Bam. Look at that. Adrian is correct. Jamarcus is draft year. 2006. That is a correct answer. So Theoretically, you could say 2019, where it was Joe Burrow and Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase was selected in the first round the next year. But the last year that LSU had a wide receiver and two players 
or a quarterback and two wide receivers selected in the NFL draft. What's 2006? It was Craig Buster Davis, Dwayne Bowe, and it was Jamarcus Russell. Now, you would think analytically that that is as ginormous of a loss as you could possibly have. Quarterback, by far, the single most important position in all of sports. And you have two wide receivers. You saw how many games an elite quarterback and two wide receivers won us this season with, at times, little production from other players. That won us a lot. We had a Heisman Trophy, a Belitnikoff runner-up. Any other year, he probably wins the award. And then, of course, Brian Thomas Jr., the most athletic LSU football player of all time, according to the RAS Math Bomb uh, metrics. You lose all of that. And you won the national championship the next season. Now think about how preposterous that is. You lose a quarterback. And not one, but two. Two first-round wide receivers. Two. And the funny thing about it was when we won that national championship the next season, we had... Very good quarterback play for Matt Flynn. And we had very good wide receiver play from Brandon LaFell, early Doucette, Richard Dixon as a tight end, Demetrius Bird. But it wasn't anything spectacular. I feel Matt Flynn was definitely spectacular versus Auburn and Alabama uh, and Florida. And we had some spectacular performances. But I do think it's in the cards that I want to get tell you tell all your work friends this. Tell all your work friends this tomorrow. Hey, you see Jaden Daniels? You see Malik Neighbors? You see Brian Thomas Jr. They're gone. But in the words of Kendrick Lamar. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. But for real, I I will send someone a Dwayne Bow card. Like, I, I was pulling out my collection there. It's a Dwayne Bow card. First twenty dollars super chat. I'm sending this to you, Debo autograph. Love some Dwayne Bow. Saw him actually earlier this year for the. Um, I think it was before the Florida game. Debo. Now, what I would tell you, though, is as great as Dwayne Bowe and Buster Davis were, they're not as good as Malik Neighbors and um, Brian Thomas Jr. And Jamarcus Russell is not as good as Jaden Daniels. Probably not close, to be honest. Actually, none of those three are, are, are close to their counterparts. But that's a, that's not the point. The point is you can you, you you can overcome it. You can overcome it. And that's why if you listen to an interview Garrett Nussmeyer said, you know, recently in the media session, you know, you're, you're just turning the page. You are turning the page. That is the brilliance of college football. Unless you're the Green Bay freaking Packers, you don't go from one elite quarterback to one elite quarterback and one elite quarterback in the NFL. You can go from like very good in Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes. You can even go elite to elite, Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. And they could obviously play for as long as they choose to at the at the at those respective franchises. But college football, you can reload. You can you can you can reload every year. Okay. And I will I will say this. I I can make a very, very, very strong case that it would let, let, let's just let's and you guys know I, I think Malik neighbors, you can make a case Mount Rushmore, 
best LSU football players of the modern era. You really can. But I will tell you this. If I could choose between losing Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. versus choosing Will Campbell and Emory Jones leaving, I'm keeping Will Campbell and Emory Jones over Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. Now, Malik and Brian Thomas Jr. might be better at what they do than what those two do, but it's harder to replace what Emory Jones and Will Campbell brings to your team. It's it's so much harder to replace that. Off at the tackle play is so freaking hard to find. And with those two guys coming back and four out of the five offensive alignment we have coming back, I I I feel I feel a lot more bullish on the team next year. Okay. And I understand defensively, we got to get better. We like some depth and we're worried about even players that have four to five star pedigree on the defensive side of the football. Are they going to give us four to five star production? There are a lot of ifs. It's going to be a crazy, crazy off season and a lot of mystery into what we're going to look like. And millions upon millions of dollars poured into the defensive coaching staff. But I, I, I have, I have grown on this team this off season I, I was skeptical of this team because of defensive line issues, and I'm still skeptical of it. I'm still very skeptical of the secondary. There is There are pieces of me that worry about our run game, not only how we block it and how we run it, but how we call it. I felt our runs were uh, getting snuffed out pretty quickly. We did a Patreon breakdown not too long ago about that where – I was showing you how dead our running game is all about. Like our running backs running directly into the arms of of defenders. So there you go. Now it's funny. Trey Harris, of course, and him and Malik neighbors are, are best buds. Um, Dude, Trey Harris is so good. Like he is so freaking good. I, I, I watched him. Like obviously he tore us up. I didn't really think it was that big a deal. I really didn't, because every single team tore us up. But if you go turn the Penn State game on, I was like, what in the hell am I watching? This guy is unreal. And you look at the SEC. I think if you rank the wide receivers in the SEC, Luther Byrne would probably have to be number one. And then I think number two would 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 be him. I'd put Trey Harris number two. And there's some other guys I think Wilson's interesting at Florida. Obviously, I think Kyron Lacey will be a top five guy this year. Um I think Tennessee's wide receiver group is is very underrated. I, I really do think so. Squirrel squirrel. White, Brew McCoy, uh, pretty good duo. They're, I don't think either one of them are special, but they complement each other. David Bell at Georgia I think is very interesting. But, you know, I that's the thing. I, I just think, you know, Malik, is, Malik and BTJ were, were huge, huge needle movers. But I think it's easier to replace that production than it is to replace off its aligned production. I mean, it it it, it just is. Tyler, what's good? Good to see you. So, there you go. Now, please tell everyone you got that stat from Power Hour LSU because we're just trying to grow this community. That's all we're trying to do. This is how I make my living, baby. This is how I feed my family. This is how, you know, today on Easter Sunday, I had not one, not two, not three, but four large pieces of fried chicken. Always eat fried chicken on Easter Sunday. Had it for lunch, had it for dinner. In the words of The Wire, 
the price of the brick went up. <laughs> uh, but this is how I feed my family. It's because of you guys watching the show, sharing the show, donating to the show, buying merch. I'm wearing my PHL shirt right now. One of many PHL shirts. PowerHourLSU.com slash shop. Funny thing is, I don't even... It's just easy. You just type your information in and they send it to you. I don't, I don't, I still ship cards out. So there you go. Let's see here. Gary, thanks for the message on Facebook. Carter, if you were to guess how many points Caitlin Clark will score tomorrow, what would I guess and why? All right. I'll tell you this. The way the game is officiated honestly helps us. The game is officiated poorly. So if a game is officiated poorly and there is a lot of fouls being called, it favors the deeper team. We are not that deep of a team, but Iowa isn't either. Their their team success more relies on one player. And one thing we do a good job of is, is drawing fouls. Last year, Poe draws a lot of charges. Whether or not you like what I'm about to say, but it, it, this is just the truth. We embellish. We 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 we've had some flops go our way. Now UCLA had some nasty flops, but you kind of have to do it because the referees are so bad in women's basketball. They call every single one of them. Uh, you know, if, if you take Caitlin, Caitlin Clark out of the game like that. So be it. I, I've seen it happen so many times. Um, I, I I think there's only so much you can do uh, when you're going up against someone uh, uh, of that stature. But I do think it's, well, a few things. It is going to be impossible for us to shoot as well as we did Um uh as as we did versus them last year so i i i'll i'll think i'll think about it as like as far as as many caitlin clark I'll, I'll go with 35 she scores 35 let's go to jared at the super chat did anyone hear okay so jared had popeyes today there you go my kind of guy can jasmine carson suit up tomorrow Man, that would be nice. That would be nice. This is something that's very interesting. I, I do want to show you this. What I mean by not as deep. Okay. So these are the scoring averages of Iowa. All right. And as you can see, they, like us, only have seven players that average over 20 minutes a game. Only seven. And they only have three players who average double-digit points per game. All right? Now, Caitlin Clark is near a triple-double every game. 7.3, 8.9 assists. Her passing is absolutely absurd. She does average five turnovers per game. I think when you have these kind of one person teams, it's a lot harder to win a two game in a three game stretch, if that makes sense. Three day stretch. I didn't say that smoothly at all. The back end of a three day stretch is tougher. All right. So that is the Iowa Hawkeyes minute distribution and point distribution. Now, what I want to show you is the LSU point distribution and minute distribution as well. So 
you take a look at it here, LSU, like Iowa, they only have seven players who average 20 minutes per game. So Maya Smith doesn't count because she's hurt, even though she's very freaking good. Uh, we'd love to have her right now. But you'll see Angel Reese, Anissa Morrow, Flage, Michaela, Haley Van Lith, last year Poa. But while Iowa has three players who average double digits per game, LSU has five. Angel Reese, Anissa Morrow, Flage, Michaela, Haley Van Lith. Five different players. And if you followed LSU this year, that's how their box scores look. It is rare you see an LSU Tiger have a 30-point game. It's rare. The box scores are, are so similar for LSU women's games. They normally have three players in that 14-point range to 20-point range. And maybe one player has 24, 25, or something like that. And I'll also tell you this. If you were to rank the players in this game in terms of who would you rather have on your team, Caitlin Clark is the best player in this game. I'll give her that. She's the best player in the sport. But the second best player in this game is Flange. Third best player in this game is Morrow. Fourth best player in this game is Angel Reese. You can put any one of those three in any other order. I would actually put Angel Reese second because if you missed it earlier, I think Angel Reese is about to light him up. And I'm not just saying because of this or anything like that. They have struggled versus elite post players. Um, and then, you know, the fifth best player in this game, I don't know. You tell me. I I don't know Iowa's roster as well as probably a few Iowa fans watching in the background. Uh, Stolke, maybe. Kate Martin, maybe. But I would probably take Michaela or HVL. So, I think, for me, I, th I think we're going to win this game tomorrow. I do. I really, really, really do. Uh, and, and you know, I, I said before this whole run happened, if we get to the Elite Eight, I'm happy with this team. I'm happy with this team. Now, from a macro standpoint, we want to win national championships. That's what we do at LSU. That's the new standard here at LSU. And everyone's going to crap on us if we don't repeat as national champions. Or if we lose to Iowa this time around. But when you factor in the injuries, when you factor in how the pieces have, have molded together here, it's hard to repeat. Teams rarely do repeat. Brianna Stewart and those UConn teams were were, were unicorns. They won four in a row. That was, that was a unicorn run. I don't know if we'll ever see four in a row again. It's that hard to, to, to win two in a row. So, I I truly, truly, truly do think we're going to win tomorrow. I do. So, if you're just now joining us, pregame, halftime, and postgame show. So pumped up. So freaking pumped up. And, and Danny Girl points this out. They do not need other team members to score double digits because Caitlin Clark scores so much. And that's the thing. You can only go so far with hero ball teams. I truly do believe it. I truly do believe it. You know, most of those UConn teams that won national championships, yeah, you know, Brianna Stewart and them would, would go off for like a, a gazillion points, but it was like kind of balanced, right? South Carolina, they've been the best program. They're, they're just loaded and it's balanced. Like Aaliyah Boston wouldn't go for like 50 or anything like that.
Let's go to Carvis. I would start HVL POA on Clark. That allows Flage to be more aggressive offensively. We can win this game by 10. Reese and Morrow, both 20 and 10. Yeah. And honestly, I would do a lot to frustrate Caitlin Clark. Make the refs blow the whistle. Get in her grill and um, make her create space. And once again, th- this would be before fixing all the officiating in college basketball. I will I will recognize that it's really hard to to referee college basketball. With that said, one rule change I think everyone could agree on is five fouls is an egregiously low number of fouls to have players playing a game and then disqualify them from a game. So, yeah, I hate that. I, I hate the five fouls thing. Six is a perfect number. If, if we can at least acknowledge that the referees are bad, why not give them a little bit of grace and give the players a little bit of grace and give them six fouls? So I that would be the first thing I would change. Six foul limit. Now, a few things I would do if I was Kim Mulkey. And honestly... Kim Mulkey coaches a game. A lot of the game prep is done by assistants. Um, You know, some assistants, their job is just to recruit during this time period. Some assistants like Bob Starkey, it's, it's, it's his job to game plan. One thing I would draw on the whiteboard and circle it 50,000 times is no cheap fouls. If we would have lost to UCLA, a big reason why we would have lost that game is two reasons. UCLA getting really hot in that third quarter and Angel Reese having some of the worst fouls that I've seen her make as a collegiate player. 30 feet away from the basket, reaching in. You're too valuable. You're way too valuable. So no dumb fouls. We don't we, we we don't need to pickpocket. We don't necessarily even need to jump in into passing lanes. They're gonna call the game light. That's how they call all games. Be smart. Don't 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 pick up cheap fouls. The the second thing I would do is if Iowa gets on a run, call a bunch of timeouts. Use them profusely. And look, there's going to be some heat checks. But if their teammates start hitting a a bunch of open threes, you got to be careful. You really, really, really do. And the last thing is, yeah, Kalen Clark can score. But the thing, like, just to give you a little behind the scenes. So last year, I was able to go to the LSU versus Virginia Tech game. Okay. And... I loved it. Really, really did. My team won. But what happened was, was after the LSU-Virginia Tech game, the area kind of cleared out. So I was by myself. Went to the game by myself. There was a bunch of open seats. So after the game, I went and, and, and sat closer to the floor. And, you know, when you're sitting closer, it's it's a completely different thing. Like, sitting close at a basketball game is so different than sitting, like, even 50 rows up or watching on TV because you could see everything. The craziest thing about Caitlin Clark and seeing her in person and seeing her that close is her passing. I have no idea some of the passes that she was able to make. I think the best passers I've ever seen live in person, I've seen Chris Paul play a lot, but LeBron James, Jokic, I've seen both of them play in person. 
how they see the floor is just crazy. I mean, Caitlin Clark's not that tall. She she just sees everything on the court. So be wary of her passing. Obviously, her scoring makes her deadly, but like we showed you earlier, 8.9 assists per game. She is truly breathtakingly good at passing. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, if you jump passing lanes, they'll backdoor you all day. Got to watch out for the back door. So there you go. Now. There you go, Spectrum talking about the back door. Dr. Drew, what's up, man? This is the Oprah Winfrey, Dr. Drew? Or Tom Segura, Dr. Drew? Chance says the NCAA needs to find the best refs and quit worrying about first, or I I don't know what DEI stuff means. Uh, Caitlin Clark can play. So are there better referees that they're not putting out there? I, I don't know. Uh, I just know it doesn't matter who it is. All, all They're all bad to me. Caitlin Clark can play shooting, passing, penetrative, uh, penetrative. Uh, she will get hers, but no one else will hurt her. Michaela Williams... That's true. Pistol Pete. Ridiculous passer. Not looking at the competition. What's up, Cliff? His Boston Celtics beat my New Orleans Pelicans. Hogbots, I'm sorry. The Big Ten is is a really good basketball conference. I mean, they, they just are. Nebraska's good. Iowa's good. Um, obviously, uh, Ohio State's really good. Michigan State was also really good in the Big Ten uh, this year in women's basketball. You know, the SEC in women's basketball, I, I guess it's it's fine. I, I wouldn't say it's as strong as it is in men's basketball. I wouldn't say it's as strong as it is in, in baseball. It's definitely not as strong as it is in football. I don't, I don't think the SEC to Big Ten, obviously – I'm not Rebecca Lobo. I can't, or, or Holly Rowe. I can't break down like top to bottom. But it seems like the SEC. I mean, I guess Auburn is good. They beat us. I don't know. Now, if you can, if it is in your hearts desire please go to powerhourlsu.com slash shop this is a t-shirt i am wearing right now if i can rock it you can rock it too powerhourlsu.com slash shop tumblers mugs posters t-shirts sweaters long sleeve shirts powerhourlsu.com slash Shot baby. Let's go to TJ. I, I want to discuss this at length. So I, I share with you the uh, the Iowa uh, or Haley Van List comments about how much you know she her disdain for the LA Times column. The media really, really does not want to see us beat Caitlin. This is true. Now I I, I do think this is true. So, I, I, do, do, do I think the media wants Caitlin Clark to continue? Yes. We are a star-driven society. We just are. LSU has better stars than Iowa does in terms of volume statistically, but also social media wise, they got superstars. Caitlin Clark is the biggest star, the biggest draw. So I think the media does want Iowa to win. 
It doesn't matter who though. If LSU makes it or Iowa makes it, it draws a big number. But I I do I do think the basketball media wants to see LSU lose. And I don't think it's because of necessarily Caitlin Clark or it's because of the players. Do I think a lot of people hate Angel Reese? I do. Do I think a lot of people are turned off with Angel Reese's mind games? I do. But they're effective. You know, I, I'll i get to Angel Reese here in just a second. I actually went through and I listed all the mental breakdowns I have counted from opposing teams via Angel Reese's trash talk. And it should be studied by social scientists because I truly do believe it's crazy. But the media doesn't want LSU to win because they hate Kim Mulkey. They do. It doesn't matter how you cut it. And and, uh, what's truly hilarious about that is, like, the, the, the media feels as if, like, there's other elite coaches that are super warm and fuzzy. Okay, Don Staley has had her issues uh, with the media. Gino Oriyama is very, very tough and old school with a lot of different things. Y'all, they don't want Kip Mulkey to win. They just don't. It could be for a lot of different reasons. They just don't want her to win. And it's people of all backgrounds that don't like Kim Mulkey. And TJ, I, I just think the media hates Kim Mulkey. And I don't I don't even think it's necessarily Kent Babb. I think we focus too much on Kent Babb and the Washington Post and even this one stupid LA Times columnist who nobody heard of. It just overwhelmingly people don't like Kim. They just don't. And this moment, this was actually brought up in the Discord by Emil, one of our patrons. Um, Kim Mulkey has this Michael Jordan quality about her, where if she cuts you off, you're cut off. It doesn't matter if you're a family member. It doesn't matter if you're just some media writer for fan buzz or, or anything. When she cuts you off, you're out. And people don't like that. People people just don't. But that's the thing, Carvis. You don't know if LSU would have won. You don't. You don't. You don't know. I prefer it this way. I do. I prefer playing them now. And also, Caitlin Clark, there are a lot of sketchy things. And I'm just I'm just going to point this out because I have been more pro Caitlin Clark than anyone else in the LSU media. I have gone as far and done an even a a, a, a 10 minute segment uh, of how Caitlin Clark has helped LSU. But I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of things outside of this that there are double standards with. And the biggest this is this is the craziest thing. So earlier this year when she lost and the fans rushed the court, she initiated the contact. At first, I thought, oh, she got hit by a fan? No, she initiated the contact. Okay? I'm I'm Caitlin Clark is one of the best athletes I've ever seen. One of the best athletes I've ever seen in, in person. And I've been lucky. Like I said earlier, I've seen LeBron, I've seen Jokic, I've seen Ronaldo in person. I've seen a lot of goats, legends, people that have transcended their sport, and Caitlin has certainly done that. But I'm just going to point this out. Just going to point it out. There was someone else. This year in college basketball. Someone else. When there was a court storming. And allegedly. A player. Got hit. 
by one of the court stormers. And this happened in the men's game. And it was Kyle Flipikowski of Duke. Guess what happened? He did the same thing Caitlin Clark did. He flopped, initiated the contact with the fan, and fell down as if he had gotten slayed in the back by a medieval times worker. And you know what happened to Kyle Flipikowski today? He got his butt kicked. He fouled out. Is the same thing coming for Caitlin Clark? Here's Mikey. She said, anyway, hope Iowa kicks your asses. No, she didn't. I'll tell you this. It is up for interpretation. L.A. Mom says she's ready for football season. Hey, we'll talk football. I'll tell you this. Since most everyone here wants to talk women's basketball, if you super chat, I'll go into football. I've already shared my piece. I had this one football stat for you guys earlier. If you didn't see it, it was about 20 or 20, I think 20 or 25 minutes ago. One stat about Jaden Malik and Brian Thomas Jr. They're all going to be first-round picks. The last time we had a quarterback and two wide receivers go in the first round, the next year we won the national championship. So take that stat, take it with you to work, and tell everyone. But Mikey B., welcome to the channel. But back to TJ's point. And by the way, commercial HVAC services, the brand new Louisiana Controls, LouisianaControls.com. New number 225-306-6038. LouisianaControls.com. Send a text. Yeah, we did have Glenn Dorsey coming back next season. But I could tell you that we have a Glenn Dorsey equivalent coming back next year. But on the offensive side of the football, and Will Campbell. Emory Jones ain't bad either. So. There you go. Now. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but it did just happen. I lost 10 viewers when I sw shifted the football. So I'll stick with women's basketball. But if you want us to go back into football, feel free to super chat. We'll go right back into it. Okay. But Mikey B, like many others, they want to see LSU lose tomorrow. They 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 want they want to see us fall. I would say if if you were to take out LSU fans. And you are also to take out Iowa fans, all right, which obviously we want our team to win. Iowa wants their team to win. If you were to take out those two groups of people, okay, I would say, TJ, roughly 70% of the country is cheering for Iowa. They just are. 70%. You know, I was with um, my wife's family today. And her nieces are huge Caitlin Clark fans. I I I, I would I would say probably 
65 to 75% of the non-LSU, non-Iowa fans want to see Iowa win. They just do. And TJ says, I'd say 90%. (laughs) So let's meet in the middle. We'll go 80%. I would say 80%. I think... um, I I would say, yeah, I would I would I would I think I think eighty might be it too. I don't know because like, so what? And he's tomorrow's from Chicago, right? So. Chicago's going to be cheering for Morrow. Baltimore's going to be cheering for Angel. I still, I still think most of America wants Iowa to win. I do. Now, because we're doing a pregame, halftime, and postgame show tomorrow, the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will answer as many questions as we possibly can. But if you super chat, we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Let's see. I want to talk a little bit here about um, the men's tournament. I've still watched a good bit of it, even though my interest waned a little bit. It could just be LSU's not in it, and LSU is obviously one of the best women's programs. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly why. Uh, where do I want to begin? Obviously, UConn's going to win it all. I do think in a perfect world, Alabama could be UConn. Even though UConn's 11 and a half point favorites. I don't bet a ton on college basketball, but uh, I, I did have UConn covering eight points versus Illinois. And when they went on that 30 to 0 run, that was insane. I don't think I've ever seen a 30 to 0 run. Like I, the, watching that thirty to zero run, UConn versus Illinois, felt like Georgia versus TCU. But for those who have not watched the men's tournament, NC State is the team I'm cheering for. Alabama made it. I think Alabama can hang with UConn, but defensively they're too bad. But NC State. So, I know we have we got a bunch of old schoolers in here, and in the modern game, you're not supposed to shoot mid range jumpers anymore. Not supposed to post up anymore. But now we have two of the best post players going at it. 
You got six foot eight DJ Burns, who's a massive human being. And then you got seven foot two Zach Eady of Purdue. So you get an old school matchup in the final four. So if you've not seen DJ Burns play, y'all, y'all have got to go watch this guy. He is so freaking fun to watch. Okay? He is. Edie from Purdue. Yeah, he's... Did he said a few things after the game today that were wild. <laughs> I, I won't say some of the things. I would literally get demonetized if I said some of the things that he said after the game. But he's so good. And I think he can play in the NBA. I, I know like traditional post players don't make it in the NBA anymore. You got to be able to shoot the three. Or you, you, you got to be able to run a certain way. There are some still shot blockers out there, but still. I think Zach Eady can play in the league. Even though he's not an above-the-rim guy, I think he can play. I wouldn't mind him on the Pelicans, to be honest. But we all know he's going to go to the Boston Celtics and Average 10 and 8 for like 10 years. Huh? 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 Uh, but, yeah, I... I, I hmm. Obviously, we all want to see Purdue and UConn go at it. UConn's got a 7-3 guy as well. Klingon, he's good. But, yeah. Zach Eady. There are some... I don't know why there was like just been a bunch of stuff on Twitter that was showing nothing, nothing illegal or anything nefarious, but still. Next thing, something I've talked about on here as well. It's a few thoughts at the end. Y'all. We have got to do something about speeding in this country. Another NFL player. Major car accident in Dallas because he was street racing. Lambo versus a Corvette. Mm -mm -mm. And you already know what position he plays. You already know. Wide receiver. You knew it. Rasheed Rice. I mean, he, he, he's got the golden ticket. The golden ticket. You are a wide receiver with Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback. And he will only be your quarterback for the entire year. Ride that wave. Next thing you know, you you, you, you could play so good. You play so good. You, I don't know who he'd be dating. You, you'll be dating Dua Lipa. Ride that wave. But he hit and run. Allegedly. Allegedly. Even though there, there's still some murky details or some people saying that wasn't him in the video. But literally, in this case, where there's smoke, there is fire. It's a pretty crazy car accident. Six car accident. I don't think anyone was seriously hurt. But folks, wh why do you street race? You're an NFL player. You're so rich. Go go rent a racetrack. Yeah, th there's a gazillion tracks out there. And there's there's all different kinds of things going around. I understand. 
if you make a lot of money, you want to go get the fast cars. And for some reason, everyone that I know, everyone I know that's that's that that makes money, they, they like to go get a fancy car. It's never worth speeding that thing. Only bad things can happen. There's so many details that are still out there. But what we do know is whoever it was in that area, they fleed. But please, if you're, if you're thinking about racing or going over 100 miles per hour, don't do it. It's hardly ever worth it. Do I occasionally drive fast? Sure. But racing, what, what? But we'll see. We'll see if it was actually him. Just think about it. Felony hit and run. Here we go. I want to see Brad Wayne throw a touchdown. Some kind of leg, and now look at this. They're going to motion here on fourth down and 11, and the punter, Brad Wing, takes the snap. He wants to throw. Brad Wing locks it downfield, and it's caught! To the goal line! Touchdown! It's the center, Alex Malax! It's mayhem! To the deep snapper. Oh, man. You can't beat it, man. Brad Wing. Is that guy, pal? DJ Burns, and I freaking love him. Rasheed Rice has retained counsel, per source, according to Jacina Anderson. A release on the incident is coming out tomorrow.
The Brahmas. John Trey Kirkland's on that team, too. John Trey's an XFL legend. Or UFL. Howard going to LSU, winning by 17 tomorrow. Ain't that something? Let's go. All right, y'all. I am done. Don't forget tomorrow, pregame, halftime, postgame show. We got you. Pregame will start probably 30 minutes before the game tip off is set for 6 15. So we'll probably start around like 5 30. We'll do a halftime and a postgame. So pumped up for tomorrow. Really, really, really am. Feels like an actual title game. Because, well, it was last year. Huh? 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 Let's shout out our top super chatters here tonight. Jared and TJ. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget, if it is in your heart's desire, go to powerhourlsu.com slash shop. And we'll talk to you soon. It is power. Out, LSU, boom. And tonight, we're doing fried chicken. Let's go.